Well, welcome back, Indian Satical family, to another blade review. Where today I'm excited for a blade that it has the potential to be a sleeper, but a really exciting addition to your pocket knife collection. Look at the freaking lines on this blade. I'm talking about the Petrified Fish Deep Sea Folder. Now, outside the vicious trailing point that the design has, it comes with Bowler K110 steel. Now, if you're not familiar with that, that is in the family of D2. It comes from Austria, and then the Bowler factory is what's producing it, doing the heat treat and doing the Rockwell, and it's Rockwell 59 to 61. So we're definitely going to be getting an upgrade, and that was one thing I was kind of excited about, over just generic D2 that you get on a lot of overseas produced blades where you don't really know what the heat treat and rock wells are. It's better than, say, HCR, uh, and definitely in most scenarios a little bit better than the OS8 unless you need really good you know, corrosion resistance. Um, but even that in this family it has high wear resistance but also good corrosion resistance even though it's a semi stainless and so because we know that it is also coming from the factories with that 59 to 61 you're definitely it's going to outperform most of your other overseas produced d2 steel blades and that's really nice to see any edc task is going to just like melt and be conquered when you whip this thing out guys the edge geometry was really well done very high saber grind basically a full flat grind uh, 0.14 on the thickness right back there tapering now the plunge line that i could see right up here uh with the grinding of the swedge was off ever so slightly you know and for the price it's and i want to say it was like 60 between 60 and 70 i believe uh pricing I'll annotate it below, links below. Quick shout out to Blade HQ for hooking me up with this. Um, I really appreciate them being a regular uh, affiliate here. And I buy so many of my blades that you see tested here throughout the year through Blade HQ. So they were willing to hook me up with this. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, it looks kind of different, unique. I like trailing points, haven't had one in a while. K110 and they sent it over to me and uh, been messing around with this thing and really surprised. And it's different than a lot of other blades that we're seeing recently from the market not only because of that great trailing point design just so cool and just continuous belly the whole time it is a slicing maniac guys i love it, it and it has the reach to do basically anything that you would want but then the symmetry just check out the symmetry of that deep sea sweeping down sweeping up Fills out my hand so well, 5.1 inches overall. So it's not a small folder. 0.6 on the thickness with flow through construction, milled out liners and a back spacer to boot right there. Liner lock on ceramic ball bearings, flipper action, nice and smooth. A little bit, it's not the smoothest ball bearing system that I've felt recently. I can feel it, it's not gritty, but you just kind of hear it like, a little bit um not an issue i'm not in particular for the price and you know what you're getting but i love the sweep there just to run it into another blade here like the slim sada as an example look at that it's almost double the thickness so if you don't really like thin folders and you like getting a really full grip on your blade this is going to allow you to do so so i was really pleased with that the finger guard with the mild jimping it's not super aggressive but you're really locked into place the scales are slick carbon fiber with a two-tone that you can see there so it almost has like a bolster look up front and then slicked out i'm it says only carbon fiber from what i'm seeing it could be g10 but those are thick scales so it just really is a beefy blade so obviously going to eat up real estate in your pocket but very cool the sharpening ricasso you can kind of you know get on there it doesn't detract from the usage of the tool at all it's not like this massive ricasso um, but you could kind of choke up there if you need to do a fine cut real quick now the one weird part and centering is perfect and the tip is well buried a lot of these trailing points and blades like this the tips are just like so close you know you can basically get your fingernail in there and like pull them out i don't like that this is nice and de deeply buried in there the pocket clip is interesting to me. So it works fine. It's kind of got a smoke gray coating, two screws, got a little bit of a pinch point. Uh, I'd rather have that than a badly executed loop over. So many loop overs lately have had the screws not recessed and then they're just buying up on your pocket. So that's kind of annoying and actually kind of gives you a little extra real estate in your pocket. So it's not like 
you know, digging into your leg when you sit down. For that, not super large, so it's not gonna create a hot spot when you're gripping it. Hopefully you guys can see this here. <laughs> it's like right next to one of the handle scale mounting screws. It's just weird, I've never seen that before. It doesn't cause any issues. I don't know if that's just like a kind of a design flaw, but it like caps over that screw. So if you were to take the pocket clip off, you would have full access to that screw, but it's actually impeding the removal of that back screw. Not that you need to do that unless you were like completely stripping a whole piece apart to do something. Um, but uh, that was just kind of odd and it's not ambidextrous. This could have been a fully ambidextrous blade. It's not, so that's a little bit of a downer. It could have easily been that if they had done it. Cool accent there with that petrified fish. <laughs> Some of the names um, that uh, come out are just so funny to me for this brand, for brands you know like this. Get really buried, hopefully you guys can see this, buried in there, stop bar, good size, zero complaints there. Mm. And then a nice milled liner lock that's not gonna be sharp. Hits exactly where it needs to be on the back spine there. And then very easy to disengage, drop, and close up. And just for two quick competitive options, the first is the CRJB Gobi. Uh, this one is also made in China, so both these blades are made in China, but obviously, again, the um, Petrified Fish is coming with that Austrian-made Bowler Steel K110, and uh, which will definitely outperform the steel on this Gobi, but it has a trailing point as well. So uh, it is gonna be way smaller, lighter, more compact, uh, then this design is going to come in about $45 to $50, whereas the Petrified Fish is going to probably be $10 to $15 more, but it's a much larger tool. In between the two, I actually like the Petrified Fish more just because you're getting a bigger, beefier handle. It stands out from a lot of the other um, designs currently, the better steel, and uh, just the, the way the saber grind is over the full flat trailing point of the Gobi, but the Gobi is ambidextrous and will have a loop over deep ride pocket clip. And in the vein of just being like a stealth sleeper blade that maybe not a lot of people are familiar with, I had to run in the Les George Astor. I love this knife. It's, I need to buy another one. I need to get another one just to have one on hand to just keep that when this one ever were to get lost or broken, you know, over time or just, you know, wears out that if they ever discontinue this model, I want to make sure that I have at least one other one in rotation. Uh, this is made in Taiwan out of uh, CTS XHP steel, best family of D2 steel you can get, even in my opinion and from my experience, better edge retention than what you get on uh, CPM D2. So it's an excellent, excellent steel choice. Uh, G10 handles, liner lock, ambidextrous, loop over deep ride, um, runs on oil infused bronze bushings. Uh, it, it is such an excellent blade, about three and a half inches. I love it with that very high saber grind as well. It is an excellent tool. If you're not familiar with it, go check out my video on it. Uh, and it, it is excellent. You can dig around and find it for about $100 and then it will go up to about 150. So, and I, I either, Definitely at $100, it's an excellent choice. 150, there are competitive options that are probably a little bit better, but it's such a sleeper blade, similar to this Petrified Fish. I put them in the same family of just like cool, really high performing that you may not be super familiar with. Um, but it, it is fun, it's different because of that handle shape, the, the great symmetry of the design with this deep sea Petrified Fish pocket knife, and it's not gonna break, break the bank and you whip that out and like petrified fish like what the <laughs> what is that you know so uh kind of a cool conversation piece but also unique to a lot of other blades out there because of the fullness in the handle and some of the features that i've hit with you so i look forward to hearing your guys thoughts on this deep sea blade particularly if you own one what's been your experience how are other petrified fish because they have a couple other designs that look very intriguing to me outside the box that I, I might get my hands on at some point. Um, what do you guys think as well of this model as well as the brand, particularly if you have experience with it, how is it help you know performing? I always appreciate the comments. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.